.NET 10 has been released, but what the steps needed to update to this version. We're going to look at a number of steps, and the first step is to update Visual Studio 2022. I've just updated my Visual Studio 2022, but interestingly, it was just a patch update. Normally when a new .NET version is released, Visual Studio is updated with a new minor version. So what's going on here? If I have a look at my programs and features, it's updated the .NET 9 SDK, but hasn't installed the .NET 10 SDK. Usually it would do that automatically. If I go to Visual Studio now, do you think I'll be able to create a new .NET 10 project? Let's try it. We'll create a new project. We'll select ASP.NET Core Web API. We'll leave that as it is. And we'll look at the framework. Yeah, there's no .NET 10 there. What's going on? Before we find that out, just to let you know that I have a minimal APIs for complete beginners course, which you can view at roundthecode.com slash min1. There's also a link for it in the YouTube video description. Now let's find out why updating Visual Studio 2022 didn't install the .NET 10 SDK. Let's do a search for Visual Studio. Oh, we've got a new version of Visual Studio, Visual Studio 2026. Let's explore the versions. So we've got the free community edition and also the paid professional and enterprise editions. We're gonna download the community edition. So we've established that we don't need to update Visual Studio 2022 for .NET 10. What we need to do though is install Visual Studio 2026. So I've downloaded the executable and it's opened up Visual Studio Installer. So it's got some options here, copy workloads, components and settings from a previous installation. Yeah, we'll leave that as it is. And we'll click on next. Come up with some warning, but we'll press okay to that. We wanna make sure that ASP.NET and web development is ticked. Everything else is optional. Let's go ahead and install it. So Visual Studio 2026 has now been installed. Let's launch it and see if we can create a .NET 10 project. So here we are, let's create a new project. Let's do a search for Web API. So we'll leave that as it is. And yes, we got the .NET 10 SDK installed because we can select it as a framework. That means we can create a new .NET 10 project. So we've successfully installed Visual Studio 2026, but what if you're not using Visual Studio? When you subscribe, you'll be notified for any new .NET videos that are released on this channel. If you're not using Visual Studio, you'll need to download the .NET 10 SDK, and we'll have a look at that now. Before we do that though, it's best to check that we haven't got the .NET 10 SDK already installed. So in a terminal window, we can run .NET space hyphen hyphen list hyphen SDKs. So I've got .NET 10 installed because there's a version there that begins with 10, but if you're a Linux or Mac user, or you're using a different IDE, then you'll need to download and install the .NET 10 SDK. We could do a search for .NET 10 SDK. We'll select the first result. And we've got the SDK here. There's versions for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. Just make sure that you install the SDK and not the runtime. The runtime is designed to run on servers. So we've installed the .NET 10 SDK. Next, we want to take an existing project and update it to .NET 10. So we've got this solution. It's got a couple of projects. It's got an API and a couple of class libraries. What we want to do is we want to open the csproj file. So we go to edit project file. And we just want to update the target framework element to .NET 10.0. We'll also do it on the class libraries as well. We'll open up the project file and update the .NET version to .NET 10. And that's .NET 10 updated on those projects. So we've updated the projects, but the likelihood is that we'll need to update the new get packages as well. To do that in Visual Studio, we go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, and Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. We make sure we click on the Updates tab, and it's got a number of updates, so we're going to select all the packages that we want to update, and just click on the Update button. We need to accept the license, and that's done. That's straightforward for a small project like that, but it might take a bit longer 
if you've got more packages. When .NET 9 was released, Microsoft dropped support for Swagger in favor of OpenAPI. Therefore, we need to make some configuration changes so Swagger reads the OpenAPI endpoint, and we'll have a look at that next. We want to open up the project file in the API, and we want to remove the swashbuckle.aspnet core package. So we'll remove that from that. Then we need to make some changes in here. We need to remove this line, the add swagger gen method. We also need to remove app.useswagger. Then we need to install some other packages. Let's go to tools, NuGet package manager, and manage NuGet packages for solution. We click on the browse tab, and we want to install microsoft.aspnetcore.openapi. We'll select that and select the API project and install it. We also want to install swashbuckle.aspnetcore.swaggerui. Once again, we want to install it on the API project. Back in program.cs, we want to call builder.services and call the add open API extension method. Then further down, we're checking if it's in development. If the environment's in development, we want to call app.mapOpenAPI. We also need to update the endpoint for where the Swagger endpoint is called. We need to change that to slash openapi slash v1.json. Let's run the application and make sure our Swagger documentation is loaded. So the Swagger documentation is loading. We've got a test API endpoint that we can test out. That's returning a 204 no content response, so that's working for us. So we've updated Swagger and successfully run the project. What do you think the last one is? The solution file in Visual Studio 2022 was very bloated, but they simplified it in VS 2026 with the new SLNX extension, which we'll have a look at now. So this is an example of a Visual Studio 2022 solution file. It's very bloated for essentially referencing three projects. This can be simplified though with Visual Studio 2026. We're gonna create a new file. This now uses XML. We need to add the solution tag. Then for each of the projects, we need to add the project tag and then add the path to where the csproj file is located. So we create a new project tag and we call the path attribute. Then we go back into the SLM file and we'll copy the reference to the API and paste it in there. We'll do the same for the other two projects as well. So we'll do it for the application. Paste that into there. And finally, we'll do it for the infrastructure project. So we can find the reference to the csproj file. We'll copy it. And then paste it in there. Finally, we need to save this file. We're going to call it round the code dot request login and we'll give it the slnx file extension. Let's open that file and see if it opens up the project in Visual Studio 2026. So we can click on it. We can select the new Visual Studio version. We can tick on this to always use this app to open slnx files. That's opening up Visual Studio 2026. And there are our three projects. A much more simplified file. If you have a Docker file in your application, you'll need to update the build and the runtime versions to .NET 10. In this Docker file, we've created a .NET version argument and it's currently set at version nine. It's being referenced when we download the SDK and the runtime. We just need to update that to version 10. After that, we need to build and run the Docker file to make sure it's still working. So that's how you update your project to .NET 10. And if you want to know what else is new, then watch this video next. Let me know in the YouTube comments what .NET 10 features you're most looking forward to. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.